I've been asked a number of times how I process images from my different lenses, and especially images from lenses that have a lot of character in how they render, and have interesting effects in their bouquet bubbles and swirls. I think that sometimes people buy lenses that do have a lot of character, but they find it takes more post-processing than they expected to bring out the best results. So in this video, I'm going to show you the software and the simple post-processing techniques I use based on my experiences with old and new lenses. I should stress up front that I'm not being paid by any of the software companies I mentioned in the video. However, as I'll explain later, I am going to provide a link to DxO, who produced the Nick collection. I'll start off by describing very briefly why I selected the software I use for image processing in general. And then I'll concentrate on the challenges of processing images with interesting effects, and show you why I find the Nick collection is especially good for meeting these challenges. I'm not talking about creating high-definition images out of low-contrast, less vivid, imperfect images, a sort of lipstick-on-the-pig approach. Now I'm going to be talking about taking images from lenses that already have a lot of unique character in how they render, but you want to bring out more of this character in a subtle and artistic way. I won't be making judgments about, for example, what the most attractive bouquet should look like after image processing. That's very much a personal thing. Instead, I'll show you how you can use filters and techniques to create various different looks for a specific image. My approach to processing most images is pretty simple, using techniques that only take a few minutes or so to apply. But no matter how long it takes to post-process an image, I really do believe that post-processing is a very enjoyable, creative, and sometimes rather undervalued part of preparing images to share with others. And whether or not you're interested in the software process itself, I hope you enjoy looking at some of the transformations I've applied to images, and please add your own experiences with post-processing software and techniques below. In the early days of digital photography, I started processing images with very basic software packages, including software that came with my cameras and on my PC. My first, more sophisticated image processing software was Photoshop Elements, PSE. I enjoyed using its various features, the sliders for contrast and color adjustments, applying some of the creative filters using layers, the blur and clone stamp tools, photo merge and so on. Then, through my commercial work on product and graphic design, I became an active user of Adobe Creative Cloud apps, all the way from creating websites with Dreamweaver to preparing graphics on Illustrator to send to printers. I used Photoshop and Lightroom to handle my photographic workflow and adjust whatever needed to be adjusted on product or client photos. Today, I'm not a huge fan of some of the changes Adobe has or hasn't made to their software and some of their monthly subscription pricing, but the packages have become an essential part of my work. Another software package I've used actively is FastStone Image Viewer. I started using FastStone before Adobe to convert raw files from my cameras. I still use the software. I like the simplicity of the image processing tools. These software packages serve their purposes, from simple tweaks to much more refined adjustments, layering, masking, and so on, from repairing problematic images to much more creative designs. However, these software packages are not always very effective or easy to use if I want to accentuate interesting effects from lenses, including bouquet highlights, bubbles, and swirls, or conversely, if I want to reduce the distractions of those effects. In theory, to accentuate these effects, you can adjust the contrast in an image, boosting the out-of-focus highlights. I'll start with boosting the effects, and then I'll cover how to reduce distracting effects later. In practice, there can be real problems when you try to boost contrasts, as I can demonstrate with this image. It was taken with the Helios 44, a lens series that is well-known and well-loved for its characterful rendering. The image, like many other images with strong out-of-focus highlights, has areas of very bright light. Boosting the contrast can result in these lighter areas becoming completely blown out. Plus, boosting the contrast to accent the bouquet can also overcook the darker areas, resulting in an unnatural-looking mix of blown highlights and very dark patches. You can try playing around with the lighting, the shadows and the highlights, but this can actually have the effect of reducing contrasts. And sharpening the image can result in a rather unnatural look to the in-focus objects, without positively impacting the out-of-focus areas. So you need to find another way to process these kinds of images to accentuate the effects. You don't always want to accentuate busy backgrounds, of course. Sometimes you might want to smooth out or shade out very busy bouquet to reduce the distractions it causes. 
It can be done, but smoothing out some parts of an image while focusing on the details and contrasts of the in-focus objects is not always very easy. Personally, I like to use software that gives me a simple solution to these kinds of challenges. And there's one software package that, in my experience, is really good at this job. It's the Nick Collection from DxO. The collection includes eight plugins or apps, and I really enjoy using them for processing images in a more creative way and bringing out interesting effects from my lenses. It can be used as a plugin to Photoshop or Lightroom in particular, but I personally use each part of the collection as a standalone application, so you don't need Adobe software to use it. From the Nick Collection, I'll concentrate on my version of Color FX Pro 5, but I'll also show you how some of the other apps can be used for creative processing in color and black and white. I've been using the Nick software for over 10 years now, and I love it, so it's always going to be central to any video I posted on post processing. After I decided to make this video, I contacted DxO and let them know what I was doing. They suggested I become an affiliate so I could provide an affiliate link to the software, which is what I've done. If you'd like to find out more about the software and you click on the link in the description below, then you'll be supporting this channel, which will really help. With the Nick software, I'm going to show you how I use Color FX Pro to process images, most noticeably how it can help to accentuate bouquet, bubbles and swirls. At the end, I'll explain how you can get even more creative with your images by using other parts of the Nick collection, including smoothing rather than accentuating busy background blur. My focus will be on images with a lot of effects, often taken wide open. However, I should stress that I also use the software to enhance product, landscape and portrait photos taken stop down, and I'll show some examples as we go along. Opening up Color FX, there's a list of different preset filters down the left hand side. I'm going to focus on two particular filters. One is the detailed extractor and the other is the bleach bypass. There are others that can help with processing bouquet, but I always start by trying these two. The strength of the detailed extractor is it can extract details in the out of focus blur in a different way to a sharpening tool. Sharpening tools are really designed to sharpen objects in the in focus areas. The detail extractor is better suited to bringing out the details in those out of focus areas. So here's what happens if I click the preset detailed extractor filter. As you can see, there's an immediate impact on the bouquet. You might find the preset settings too dramatic or not dramatic enough, so you can start with playing with the detail. Personally, I don't overdo the detail control as the image starts to look very unnatural. Equally, I don't push the contrast or the saturation too much. Again, I try to keep the changes as subtle as possible. And clicking this button at the top, you can compare the before and after impact of the changes you're making. That's the detail extractor. Now, if you want a more dramatic way of accentuating bouquet, there's another filter that works really well. It's the bleach bypass filter. I'll use another image as a demonstration, one better suited to the filter. It's quite a dark image straight out of the camera, and it's a good candidate for the kind of boost that bleach bypass can deliver. It's also a big soap bubble bouquet image, so we can see how it handles these effects. I'll start by clicking on the filter with its preset settings. It actually looks very scary, but don't panic because if you change the settings, the image starts to come to life. The first thing I do is to reduce the contrast as far as it'll go to the left. I'll move the saturation slider to the far right to recover some of the colors. I'll make these two changes to every image with this filter. Then I add some brightness to the mix if the image needs it, and this one does. Finally, I play with the local contrast. This boosts or quietens down what's going on in the out of focus areas. The amount of boost I use depends on the image. Now I haven't finished with this image as I'm not 100% sure I like the colors and tones. And this is where you have a variety of other color adjustment filters to try. I find playing with sliders in the contrast color range filter is a good place to start with an image like this, where I want to have richer reds, for example. And here are the before and after results. You could argue that I've overdone the contrast and color boosts, and you may be right, but I've done this deliberately to show you the impressive way the filters can accentuate the soap bubble bouquet produced by this lens. I regularly use the detailed extractor and bleach bypass filters on completely different kinds of composition, including landscape shots. For example, in this image, I wanted the autumn leaves to stand out more, and it was processed using the detailed extractor and some color contrast changes. 
This image was processed using the bleach bypass. It helped to boost the contrasts without blowing the brighter parts. And a good example of how to dramatically alter an indoor shot. This is from Gloucester Cathedral. I've used the bleach bypass filter. The final version has an HDR look, maybe too strong for some, but it's certainly an eye-catching result. In terms of processing images to accentuate swirls, some people have written to me to say they can't get their lenses to swirl as much as they expected, having seen my photos. Well, of course, you need to get the right composition and the right light effects to maximize swirls with a swirly lens. But if the swirls are there, perhaps lurking in the background, you can also use the detail extractor or the bleach bypass to help bring out those swirls, and that's what I've been doing with my photos. This isn't a particularly obviously swirly image, but it does have potential. The problem, as I've demonstrated before, is it doesn't help to boost the contrasts here, as that simply blows the highlights. Instead, I've used the bleach bypass filter, and here's the result. I'll show you another adjustment that can work very well with swirly images, indeed with many images with a lot of interesting bokeh effects. And that's to play with the dark and light contrast using the dark and lighten center. I use this a lot on my photos. This filter darkens or lightens selected areas in an image in a more subtle way than a low key or high key filter would. By darkening parts of the image around your selected center, you can create a more 3D effect, isolating the part of the image where you'd like viewers to focus on. One reason to use this with swirly images is that it creates a natural looking circular shading around a center point, and this can help to increase the impression that the background is swirling. Alternatively, you can lighten up rather than darken parts of the image. I like to use this filter for lightening up the edges of some swirly images because it helps to expose parts of the image where there are more interesting effects to be highlighted. I've got another before and after example here, not with a swirly background, but one where there are relatively dark areas away from the center. By lightening up those areas, it's created a lighter feel to the whole image, more in keeping with the spring-like look of the central blossoms. In terms of lightening the center while darkening the edges, I have one other good example of how effective the software is. This image has some wonderful bokeh effects, but the in-focus part is really too dark. After processing, by lightening up the dark in-focus parts and adding some subtle shading to the edges, I think you can see quite a lovely improvement to the image. You can select an off-center point for lightening up the in-focus areas, and you can have fun seeing what the impact is of changing the luminosity of different areas in the image. Moving away from wider open shots, I've had good luck using the dark and lighten effect on other types of shots. This one, taken in Gloucester Cathedral's cloisters, turned into a particularly striking and successful image, I think. If you want a more dramatic approach to darkening or lightening the borders, then you can use a vignette lens filter. You can use this filter to produce low-key or high-key images. The example I prepared here is a low-key one. But you can easily change this to a high-key image. Sometimes I repeat this process on an image to increase the impact of the high-key vignetting. Here are a few other examples of images I produced using this filter. I particularly like the ability to select an off-center point for the vignette using the software. This micro image using a small plastic figure and some cooking flour is one of my favorite images created using the vignette tool. By changing the center point for the vignette, you can see how this changes the light and shadows on the moon's surface. While we're talking about vignetting, there's a vignette blur filter that's a very simple and effective way of smoothing out bouquet rather than accentuating it. Something you might want to do when the background of the original shot is too busy and too cluttered with objects that distract from the subject in focus. Take, for example, this flower shot I've been using in the video. It's a little rich to call the background too busy in this shot because I actually created these busy effects using the software, but it's a good test of how you can smooth out the busyness again. And it does a pretty good job. I found that this filter can work well with overly busy backgrounds of all kinds, including portraits. However, there's an even better tool for blurring in analog effects called Subtle Bokeh, which I'll show you in a minute. 
Down the left hand side of Color FX Pro, there are many other options for processing images, and I've enjoyed using them all from time to time. But I'll not go through any more of them now. That's something perhaps you could try yourself. Instead, I'd like to briefly describe some of the other applications that come with the Nick collection. First of all, a strong recommendation for Silver FX Pro. This has so many useful filters for applying black and white effects. I actually find this application indispensable. Indeed, not just indispensable, but also a lot of fun, with a lot of creative ideas. I've used it to process all 40 black and white photos I've had explored on Flickr, a testament to the visual impacts these photos have, as I feel it's much harder to get a monotone explore than a colour one. One of the creative things you can do in this software is to produce a swirly look artificially, and I'll show you how this works. It's in Analog FX Pro, in the Motion tool. It helps to use an image that has some interesting objects in the background, around an in-focus object somewhere in the foreground, so you can make those background objects swirl around. It's not the same as a natural lens swirl, but it's a fun thing to try. Analog FX also has a tool called Subtle Bouquet, which is good for calming down Busy Bouquet. It gives you more options for processing background blur than the simpler vignette blur I showed you earlier, and also enables you to define the shape of arrows you want to keep in focus. Analog Effects also has other tools for creating interesting photos, including processing images so they look like they were taken with antique cameras or printed on glass or paper. To give you just one example, here's one of the wet plate filters. And a few more images processed with a vintage look. If you use vintage lenses on digital cameras in particular, it's fun to produce some vintage style photos. While these scroll past, I should add that the Nick Collection has other applications, which I'm not going to cover in this video, but they are explained on Nick Collection's website. That's all for now. I've shown you a cross section of the image processing techniques I've been using, and I hope you found this interesting and perhaps some food for thought. I also hope you'll add your own experiences and ideas about image processing below. I'm looking forward to reading your comments. And if you're interested in learning more about the Nick Collection, then please click on that link in the description. Until the next time, all the best.